As soon as that liquid leaves that tip and hits that envelope of air, it is instantly turned into a vapor. That vapor, in atomization, hits the wall, becomes a fluid, and dries into solid. So you go liquid, vapor, liquid, solid, all in one pass. We used to just call it painting. <laughs> makes you come out to a day like today is, okay, not only how can we get our heads around spraying and do it better and train our people to do it better, but how can we do it better than our competition? What we're going to run you guys through today is how you turn things down, slow things down a little bit to actually end up faster to a better result. And I've lost efficiency right here. And as I back up, I lose a good pattern. Right. So good spraying is about figuring out how the machine works with the product in such a way that you can turn it down to get a better result at what I would call a more comfortable pace that ends up being faster. So that looks good, right? A little bit around, it has to get down so it's actually on top of the floor. From here to here, it goes from an eighth inch hole in the back of our tip to 0.017 at the front of the tip. If you were to describe this inch right here, it's a violent inch. There is some violence going on inside here. It's a lot of pressure. Bring her down a little bit. So you go force it, you know. So I can go home, come back, or I can just wheel this machine back into that area, switch my tip out to a much narrower tip, drop my pressure, and in the same day, I'm now spraying all the trim around the room. So I'm only doing primer. And I can overspray onto my wall. It's not going to hurt my wall because I'm using a multi purpose. It can be the same primer if it needs to be. You know you're kind of pushing the envelopes, and at the same time, you want yep. to get right to that edge because That's the more product you put on, the better it lays down. <laughs> Let's say, for example, we know that the job has dictated a three-coat system. Primer, two coats of paint. We could brush all that if we wanted to. And let's say it's going to have a brushed finish on the trim. That brushed finish can happen in the last step. It doesn't have to happen in step number two. As we know, kitchen cabinets are exposed to what? Two items, two things. Moisture. Moisture and grease. grease. grease both from your fingers opening the cabinets and the kitchen environment. And then the whole moisture problem in a kitchen, you want to make sure these babies are sealed.
gain your speed through efficiency, not through flat out going past. Just having control of that and eliminating variables, taking things out of the equation that can mess you up, gives you that confidence that it worked yesterday, it's gonna work today, it's gonna work every day.